Hello friends, I'm Dr. Pooja Kapoor, consultant pediatric neurologist, Paras Hospital, Gurgaon, director and co-founder of Continua Kids. So today uh, the topic of discussion is, are there any medicines which are there to treat autism spectrum disorder or what are the medicines which we use commonly in autism spectrum disorder. So let's uh, talk about the most commonest medicine used and for what it is used. So the most commonest medicine which is used in autism spectrum disorder is melatonin. It comes in syrup as well as in tablet form and this is the medicine which is used for the induction of sleep in autism spectrum disorder. <clears throat> so basically melatonin is a hormone which is produced by our pineal gland. So as soon as we close our eyes, so melatonin starts secreting and that is an indication that like we have to go to sleep. So the first step in the initiation of our sleep is to close the eyes and then the secretion of melatonin. It has been very well studied that in children who have got autism spectrum, they have the secretion of melatonin is very less and because of that, they have problems in the initiation of sleep. So children with autism have two concerns with their sleep. One is the initiation. So we'll start the sleep. You will take them to the bedroom, put off the light, try off each and every sensory phenomena, hug them, close them, put on blankets on them, try some music, but still it will take like hours together for the induction or the induction of sleep. And that is because of the deficiency of uh, the not functioning or basically irregular secretion basically of melatonin uh, hormone. So it is said that once you supplement this uh, melatonin hormone, the sleep induction or the starting initiation of sleep become easier and because the initiation becomes easier, the child starts sleeping within the next 20 to 30 minutes of giving the medication. So the next day is a beautiful day because you yourself can understand if you have not slept well or <clears throat> you are unable to sleep, the next day you are not uh, as energetic as you should be uh, once your sleep is completed. <coughs> Excuse me for this all cough and cold. So, so uh, we all know that good sleep is uh, very important for the proper functioning of the next day. So the induction of sleep is very much important and so is because we waste at least two to three hours making the child sleep and that time is just wasted. If you start making him sleep by 10 or 9, he'll sleep by 1 or 12, something like that. And so the morning uh, of getting up of sleep also is like delayed. So you have very less time for the therapies or for the interaction. So for the induction of sleep, melatonin is used very commonly. And in other countries apart from India, it is an OTC. That means over the counter medicine. That means you can just without the prescription also, you can get the melatonin. So and uh, it only helps in the induction of sleep. The other thing which I was telling was about the other sleep concerns in autism spectrum disorder. Children are that they have problem in continuation of sleep. So in continuation of sleep, melatonin does not have much role to play. And it is said that if you do good occupational therapy and you make the child uh, use this extra, extra energy, that helps in the continuation of sleep too. <clears throat> so now coming to the side effects. A lot of parents are always concerned about, hey, ma'am, side effect kya ho jayega? What would be the side effect if I'll start using it? It is an addictive thing or what? 
so it is said that as you make the child do occupational therapy his sensory needs are met his excessive energy is channelized he is good to go and eye connectivity establishes that is the time when the secretion of uh, melatonin increases by itself and that is the time when you can stop the medication so it is safe to be given and the regular dose it comes in like Mm, uh, tablets of 3 mg and 5 mg the maximum dose is 9 mg by which we can give so we also have got syrups so for per 5 ml we have 3 mg of the melatonin so we start with a minimal dose and if <clears throat> not effective we can go to 9 mg of the thing it can be given for months together it is not that it has got an addictive effect if the child starts sleeping you can definitely stop it and you have to make efforts to make the child start sleeping early by doing uh, good sleep hygiene and also making him do good occupational therapy if sensory concerns are there or if excessive energy is there then you have to channelize the energies now side effect to generally it right now till date we haven't got on like a much of the side effects for this and uh, it is a safe medicine which can be used and outside it's used as otc also now coming to the next medicine which is used very commonly in autism spectrum disorder and uh, mm, a lot of the parents are quite skeptical about it that i will not use it no matter what happens and that very mm, popular medicine is resperidone so we as pediatric neurologists psychiatrists they use this resperidone very frequently in and out so you have to understand that that yes resperidone has got side effects but when used judiciously then you can just titrate it to the amount or to the level whatever is required for my child so we see a lot of our children have got a lot of the concerns in the form of hyperactivity a lot of uh, sensory concerns and which even are not becoming better by uh, using uh, occupational therapy if you're using in and out but not even they are not helping in our sensory concerns the child has got a lot of sensory concerns a lot of vestibular he's jumping up down in out not uh, having visuals having uh, auditory and in spite of having good occupational therapy the, there are still issues and which are creating a barrier in the proper uh, communication socializing of my child so that is the time when this medicine comes into the role play and uh, believe me i've been using this medicine in and out and <clears throat> i can tell you a number of parents who are happy with the the way this is this has acted and helped their child in having attention in having in reducing the stereotypies and decreasing the vestibular sensory concerns and so the major concern of the parents is side effect so side effect is you have to tight that key home message is that you have to titrate the medicine you cannot give like the medicine in the morning first of all the side effect is sedation so unless and until it's like the child is very very bad and very very hyper we don't use the medicine in the morning we use it only at the night time because we know the side effect of the medicine is sedation sedation means it helps you it it just uh, increase the sleepiness so once you will give the night dosing so first of all the sleep would be good and also the sedative the side effect would be used in sleep and in the morning the child would be in a better state of affairs and only the effect would be there the sedative side effect would have been down brought down and it has to be used in very minimal quantity and titrated so the dosing could be starting from 0.2 ml to 3 ml but whatever suits my child is the dose for my child so if you will do increase if you will just start the medicine at a higher dose 
maybe the child may be sleepy throughout the day and out so a lot of therapist complain the next day ki ma what have you given to the child he is sleeping and he is not following the command he was following the commands previously but right now he is not following it's because of the dozing so make sure that we start when you consult a person who is uh, who gives this medicine in and out who knows about it your doctor is the best person to ask in and then you can start with a very minimal dose that too to be given at night and you have to titrate the dose so that my hyperactivity my inattention my running around my sensory phenomena my stereotypical movement if you are targeting those things those should be targeted and those are the things for which we will look in for the titration with with the side effect so once you are sedated because of this medicines you may have urinary incontinence too so that means a child who was toilet trained before and was not using diaper and was not bed wetting at night if you just put it at a high dose he may start bed wetting so that means your dose is not uh, not appropriate you have to put it down also some children they may be they um, they may lose the because of the sedativeness and all because of they are because they are sleeping throughout the day he may not be able to perform the functions which he was doing before the medications so make sure you consult to your doctor your consult person and then titrate the dose accordingly so that we create a balance between my effects and my side effects and minded friends i have been really using this medicine and majorityly of my patients are satisfied with the dosing and they are getting the results what we wanted so <clears throat> in few of them obviously i have to stop the dosing but in majorityly in 90% above children whatever we have used it's doing good to the child so the indication has to be specified word what are the goals for which you are using this medication what if if you have not done any therapy if you are just come in like that and you start with a sedative uh, start with risperidone is not the right choice so most of you will go and read about oh risperidone it's an atypical antipsychotic but my child is not psychotic so why should i give it so mind it this has been very well studied it is the previous the original role of the medication was used as or is used as rather as an antipsychotic uh, atypical antipsychotic and is used in psychosis <coughs> but we use it for other concerns in autism spectrum children and this has been proven and studied a lot now next comes the role of adhd med medication in autism spectrum disorder so a lot of our children would be running around because of the sensory concerns they may be having sensory concerns and they may be hopping hopping from one sofa to another from one bed to another moving towards a heightened space on the almira and then would be jumping or they may be just moving round and round and round at their places and <clears throat> so that hyperactivity which you could see or you define as hyperactivity could be because of my sensory concerns but the once you settle down the sensory concerns but the child has a lot of inattention or still a lot of impulsivity so you are making the child start learn the things so he is settled he is good he started with the speech but at one point of time you are making him learn the things now write down 1 to 10 so write down 1 and 2 and 3 and then he will like hmm he will just keep the pencil rotate the pencil he'll be lost somewhere around there so he may show some signs of inattention similarly he could also be very impulsive okay 1 2 3 and then gone or he is like still jumping a lot so we really have to differentiate these and dissect because now it has been proposed and studied and very well known fact that autism spectrum could be associated with adhd so once you have dissected the phenomena of um, sensory concerns and hyperactivity 
secondary to sensory concerns and you have settled that that is the time if the child is still not responding you have to think of adhd that is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder so at that point of time that is the time when we used adhd medication so it has been very well studied and documented that adhd medication has to be used only after 6 years of age and not before that but if the child is very hyperactive very hyperactive you could use it before 6 uh, years of age also but uh, by a person who has been using this medication in and out but that means and by a experienced person who who uses this so and what are the medications which are there so these are two major groups which we use these medications uh, they are one is methylphenidate so i'm not going to go into a detail of it but as a person whose parents uh, whose children are like uh, have have the concerns they should know a bit about these medication first of all these medications are there to help your child again for the adhd medications so in just plain case of adhd who does not have any autism spectrum disorder we still see parents not giving medication in spite of the child failing in the class in spite of the child going into depression in spite of the child in inability to make friends because of hyperactivity or impulsivity <clears throat> or in attention make sure ki please help your child because at one point of time they just cannot control themselves it is their problem and you have to understand that adhd in itself is a concern so once we know that it is associated with asd so we have to be very very thoughtful about that this uh, adhd is not because of my sensory concerns and once we have dissected so make sure sit with your doctor and be don't be afraid of starting with adhd medication so the AD, the adhd medications which are used along with asd are the same as used with children with adhd alone so what are the medications so two types one is stimulant that is methylphenidate again the the major side effect for which the majority of the parents come in ki isne khana nahi kha raha hai he is not taking his appetite has gone down uh so what is the thing like we give this medication after breakfast and if this not a sustained release medication so it will last only for few hours maybe if you will give it after breakfast at 9 o'clock the the effect would last till like 4 o'clock or 3 o'clock and then the the effect will wane off and the child would be the same and but during these phase of 4 to 5 hours you will see a dramatic change in your child that the attention has improved and a lot of hyperactivity has gone in if you are able to teach him in that spot short span a lot number of things that is so good because that is what we are looking in for and uh, again it is not a habit forming medication because you can stop once uh if you are on a vacation you don't want to your child to have be attentive or you don't want your child there is no study lessons and uh, you are on a vacation and you can be hyper a bit so there is no problem if you stop on those days so we say weekend holidays we give in these so on saturdays and sundays the schools are not there there is no therapy class and you don't want to give the medication i'm fine with that so the rule is again this is not addictive this is not that you are just going into the habit of forming that once you start this medication you have to give throughout your life no it's not that bad but you once you will start seeing the effect <coughs> you yourself will try okay let me give this medication because my child is giving me the effect is able to study more is able to concentrate more is able to imbibe more his vocalization has improved his socializing because of his attention and vocabulary increase it's like he is using more words and we give it for a period of for 6 months and then we can stop for a while and see how much the child is doing without the medication if the child has achieved whatever our goals are then we can stop the medication 
So generally we do this during the vacations when the child, the schools are closed and uh, the child is not doing anything, uh, not going anywhere. So that is the time we can, we can take off this medication, stop for a while and see it. So because a lot of parents are under the belief that name, once the medication is started, it will be throughout life. Please, it is not so. So in a, in a lot of our children, we have stopped the medication. And in, in fact, uh, uh, we stopped it and whatever goals we had uh, asked for, or whatever goals we wanted to achieve, we have achieved it. And once you start speaking, once you have achieved the goals, they don't go into the regression. They will not go back and the child will stop whatever he was doing before or have learned before. Whatever is learned is learned. <clears throat> So the methylphenidate is the salt name and it comes into the market in various other uh, brand names, which I'm not going to discuss. So the major side effect what the parents say is like bhook nahi lagna. So the thing is, if you'll give the medication at after the breakfast, that's why we say heavy breakfast karao. So he may miss the afternoon uh, lunch <coughs> or he may, like, he may take light lunch. But because the effect lasts only till three or four, so he may be uh, again for the dinner, the child may be full throttle hungry. So whatever you want to feed the child, you can feed the child at dinner time because that is the time because the effect of the medicine has weaned off. And that is the time the child would be very much hungry as like a normal child. And it has been studied and very well studied and proven that in the long term, even though the child misses the lunch, the weight loss and height loss is not there significantly. So that means in the long run, because you will think of agar weight loss, hoga, to fir height loss bhi ho jayega. No, no, no. It has been very well studied that in the long run, the children compensate because the dinner goes on in beautiful way. And during the vac vacation time, when we are not giving the medication, the child just pulls up and they are long, they are no long term. Uh, weight or height effect in the long term of the child. So suppose a child who's taking the medication and suppose a child who's not taking the medication, he may show a small dip in the graph for the weight, but in the long run after five years, the weight and the height would be appropriate of the two, two groups who have been taking the medication and who have not been taking the medication. Okay. So, <clears throat> so because of this, two things that it is a habit addictive thing no it is not and because the appetite goes off please mothers parents try to understand that we are looking in for a long term benefit for our children and small short term loss of appetite loss really that can be fulfilled later on once my child achieve the milestones which are required for my child okay so the next line medicine is <clears throat> again for the ADHD medication only but it's like one is methylphenidate the other is non-stimulant and that is called as atomoxetine so a lot of our children would be using Accepta and other brands for the atomoxetine salt and that is the medicine again it is again used the same um, effect as the uh, methylphenidate and same it has to be used in the morning after the breakfast again the side effect could be uh, you could have appetite loss. In some children, <coughs> in some children, you may see that by using atomoxetine, you may have increased hyperactivity. So mind it, don't drop the medication just once you have given it. Give it for a period of at least three to five days to know what is happening. This is similar for each and every medication. <coughs> yeah, excuse me for this. I've really got a bad throat. <coughs> yeah so we were on that you just don't stop the medication after the first dosing 
Similarly, with resperidone also, you should not stop the medication. Maybe after two to five days it happens, the child get accustomed to the thing and then the side effects weans off, goes off and the effects comes in. So before stopping, before complaining to your doctor that this is a bad medicine and this and that, just make sure that you've given it for at least three to four days. And then you can go back to your doctor and ask him for ye ye ho gaya, ye ye ho ra. <coughs> for a better insight. So, so these are the few medications which are used. So I've labeled four of them. One is melatonin, which is like no side effect. You can use it in and out. The next is like risperidone. The next is methylphenidate. And the next is atomoxetine. So the take home message is that, that these medications can be used and can be used for the good of your child if used judiciously and weight wise, according to the dosing wise, then and also be titrated according to the symptoms of the child, then they do wonderful effects. And we have lots and lots of our children who have been using it in and out and have been doing beautifully well. Leave apart a few of them who have got side effects then obviously we can stop every every <clears throat> the very minute you've got the side effect we can stop the medication and then the child would be back to normal after the med stoppage of medication if you see any side effects okay so but make sure that these medicines are to be used by uh, in consultation with a very with the physician or the doctor who has been using this in and out okay so that is all for today which we have i'll just close the session early because i think i am not able to speak much i'll just look into the comments and see if i could answer three or four questions today okay <coughs> uh. hello ma'am my daughter is almost four years old diagnosed with mild autism so I think I'll take today the med the questions which are related to my um, drugs only, medicines only. So Ujula Gaikwad, does Arkamine works for ADHD? So a very good question, uh, Ujula. Yes, we use Arkamine also for ADHD. So Arkamine is one medicine which is also used by us. I did not take the name of this because then it got a lot of medical jumble and all and uh, I don't want to make you doctors. I want you to understand the basics because these are very important and very uh, <clears throat> crucial drugs which have to be used by an experienced physician only. So to answer just the query of that, that does Arkamine also works for ADHD? Yes, we use Arkamine. In children who have not been uh, controlled by the other medicines which I have already labeled and then we can use Arkamine too. <clears throat> so by Shorya, uh, hello madam, my son is four year old and ASD taking therapy but his hair test results shows high level of lead arsenic. Please suggest. So again, uh, this is not off the track question, but still, okay, let me just answer this. So, lead poisoning could be one of the cause which can lead to the features of autism spectrum disorder. So, it's a heavy metal, but the thing is like nowadays we are not seeing a lot of lead poisoning. If we suspect lead poisoning, where are the sources of lead poisoning? Number one. Whether you are staying in a very, very old house where lead pipes were used before. Because right now, once we are new, newly <coughs> built houses, we don't use lead in our water pipes. Uh, previously, we used to have lead pipes and because of that, lead toxicity could happen. Or you are living somewhere near where battery manufacturer or uh, the processing of lead or where lead is used in, in in building up other things if you're staying near around some factory or industry where lead is being used for a manufacturing of other things yes you could suspect maybe lead seepage and then you get in through the water could be <coughs> or it could be that previously we were having a lot of lead in our uh, petrol the, the petrochemicals the petrol and all 
so in the vehicular pollution we could have a lot of lead but the thing is like the lead has been i mean it's stopped using we have stopped using the amount the petrol which has got lo loaded with lead and now it's much safer and the amount of lead in the air also is less so we don't do the lead levels regularly in any child who comes with autism spectrum disorder until and unless we have a history suggestive of that the child has been because i had a child who was taking some homeopathic ayurvedic and then that had the lead we got the water tested we got so basically it was not uh, uh, over here he was based in us and us they had like after one year of age if you have the symptoms they test up everything and they found the lead in the medicine he was taking for his gastritis he was having gastrointestinal reflux and for that he was taking some homeopathic ayurvedic medicine and because it had lead in that and that there they found out from which lead was there and then the child landed up into features suggestive of autism spectrum and the lead was done and it was very high but in regular children we regularly don't do lead unless and until there are other features like a child who's got lead poisoning would also have constipation would be normal before would have uh, after you shifted to a house which has got old plumbing that is the time when you can have lead poisoning and that could lead to other children also in the family could be affected by the same they go into encephalopathy and so we suspect this so uh, <clears throat> in uh, also we don't do the hair testing for that we do the blood testing for that so blood testing after blood testing if it's really high so the normal level is like less than 5 which is documented in all of us is blood level i'm talking about and if you really have got features where you require chelation chelation is that means you just bind the lead so that it goes out of through the body <coughs> chelation therapy is only used once the level of above 45 or above 55 some people quote 45 some people quote 55 so there's a variation but definitely before that suppose if my lead levels are between 10 15 Uh, somewhere around that then we use a lot of antioxidants in the form of vitamin e vitamin b vitamin uh, uh, <clears throat> ascorbic acid that is vitamin c and uh, that these are all antioxidants and they tend to lower the level of lead in the blood so that you can use but these are all the things you have to discuss with your doctor and not use it Uh, not take the advice from over here okay because this is not a platform where we could give medical advices we could only guide you that okay go to your doctor because we think there are certain things which are not good with the child and you should meet the doctor so bhavna rohit sharma ma'am harshit ki rest medicine harshi rest don medicine chal rahi hai usse भूख भी लग रही है थोड़ी काफी शांत भी हो गया है बट जब से बंद हुई है तब से भूख नहीं लगती है सो द थिंग इज लाइक रेस्पेरिडोन कॉजेज इंक्रीज इन एपेटाइट इट कॉजेज इंक्रीज इन एपेटाइट दैट ऑल्सो यू कैन टेक इन द साइड इफेक्ट इफ द मेडिसिन इज यूज इन हायर क्वांटिटी एंड बट द थिंग इज लाइक इफ द चाइल्ड इज आस्किंग फॉर अ लॉट ऑफ फूड because of the appetite increase in the appetite because of resperidone what you have to do is like that because you cannot change the uh, quantity because he is hungry he'll ask for food what do you do is like you change the quality of the food so we tell the parents to give him a lot of kheera kakdi gajar all the vegetables and the fruits because they have less of the calories they are more filling and once you feed them with them then you can give the actual of dinner or the lunch which you have there dal chawal sabzi roti or whatever they are there what's there for the lunch and make sure that all these children who are on resperidone don't give a lot of sweets and don't give a lot of oily food because <clears throat> because oily foods also cause a lot of weight gain so make sure that you give the child a lot of uh, low calorie food before because that is filling and then the child would be eating less of the high calorie food 
सो भावना टू आंसर योर क्वेश्चन कि जो है नाव अब अब जो है वो खाना भी बंद कर दिया है और काफी हाइपर हो जाता है कभी कभी सो इफ इट्स ओनली कभी कभी देन यू कैन यूज द थेरेपी एज अ साइड थिंग टू यू मैनेज द थिंग्स बोथ इन द बिहेवियर थेरेपी एज वेल एज अदर थेरेपी लाइक ऑक्यूपेशनल इफ रिक्वायर्ड एंड इफ यू फील दैट दिस द प्रोग्रेस ऑफ द चाइल्ड इज हैम्पर्ड एंड द वे ही वॉज लर्निंग बिफोर ही इज नॉट लर्निंग देन यू शुड री स्टार्ट द मेडिकेशन आफ्टर कॉन्सल्टेशन ओके सो आलिया नॉरी हाय आलिया हाय मैम इज न्यूट्रोपिल सिरप इफेक्टिव स्पीच डिले सो न्यूट्रोपिल इज ओनली ओनली इफेक्टिव एंड हैज बीन स्टडीड एंड वेल प्रोवेन ओनली इन ब्रेथ होल्डिंग स्पेल दैट इज द दैट इज द प्रॉब्लम इन विच इट इज ऑफ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इट हैज अ वेरी हाई इंपॉर्टेंट रोल अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट इन स्पीच डिले नोन पेरासिटाम और न्यूट्रोपिल डज नॉट हैव मच रोल टू प्ले so sk aziz what is best hyperactivity controlled by risperidone or physically exhausted i'll go for physically exhausted if the child's hyperactivity is controlled by making physical exhaustion nothing like that nothing like that so that is why medicines are to be used only after you have used the therapies you have used other things and if they are not working that is the time uh, once you have that is the time that you have to use the medication we never 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 advise or advocate use of medication in the first hand okay <coughs> uh okay ujjwala uh please request to do another session on eeg differences okay we will do something on eeg also okay but to answer you at this point of time eeg does not help you to differentiate between adhd and autism and it is not a uh diagnostic uh, tool to find out whether my child has asd or adhd so eeg does not play a role eeg could cause asd like symptom uh, uh, the diagnostic thing where you can pick up that autism like features are caused by problem in the brain and that could be picked up by eeg but eeg cannot differentiate between adhd and autism okay <clears throat> so so there is one more so garima vishnoi has asked my son is 6.8 years old and he is taking this medicine from last 5 months after giving medicines he remain calm for 2 hours but after 2 hours he again start hyperactivity methyl phenidate 10 mg shall we continue giving this medicine or shall we stop so garima the take home message is we give the medication till the time we want the effect okay agar hamare target meet ho gaye hain then i think we can stop but if you are asking no oh, that my child requires it because after we stop it the child again start hyperactivity as you said so why not let the child be calm quiet and make him learn n number of things and let him lead a normal life where he could connect with people where he could socialize because you can understand for a hyperactive child even the closest of the relative would say ki nahi hamare ghar mein mat lao so i today had a mother who's uh, whose mother said ki please this child does not go with me so you take your child along with you you know it's so difficult for the mothers to to listen to all this about their children so if we give the medication and yes we uh, uh, my child is so cool and calm and has settled down what's the harm so if my goals are required what is your goal if it's a saturday it's a sunday you are at home nobody is coming you want the child to run around it's okay with me i will not give the medication 
If it's like you are on a vacation, you don't want to give the medication, you are in Goa, you are on the waves, you are running around, you are moving around, the child is physically so much exhausted, I'll not give the medication. So you have to set up the goal, what your goal is for the child, for the medication. Any child ADHD diagnosis, no, it's not that case. You have to read the child, you have to find out the goal, why, how, when and all. Okay? <clears throat> so I think I have I have done with it. Huh? Koi or agar question hai? Okay. I think I've answered all. And uh, sorry, I'll ending the session a bit early because I'm not feeling good. And uh, we'll meet definitely. We will talk more about about anything and everything about autism so do pour in your take care of your children try to help your children even if the medicine is required try to give with consultation with your doctor and try to help the child side effect hoga ban kar denge will definitely stop the medication once the side effects start but for the effect please think rationally okay and help your child Thank you so much for patient hearing and bearing with me. Thank you.